So I've known many girls who ride horses, and I never knew of any difference between a horse girl and quote unquote a regular girl. You know, it seems to be the same distribution of crazy slash non crazy, etc. But apparently, in American culture, there seems to be this perception that horse girls are crazy. So I'm going to do a little literature examination today. And let's look at the literature available online and see why people in America think horse girls, equestrian women, women who ride horses, whatever word you use to describe them, why people think they're crazy. So let's do this. So the first resource we're going to use is from the magazine online publication called Postgrad Problems. I guess it's for frat boys who just now have to enter the real world. It's called Why Equestrian Women Are Crazy. Women who ride horses are just like women who own a lot of cats, just richer and crazier. I feel it's necessary to explain why, why we are crazy, as in this is written by a woman. Wow, this is written by a woman. Interesting. Or extremely, she said we, or extremely misunderstood depending on your viewpoint. I've ridden horses my entire life, therefore I feel I have the necessary qualifications to explain why we are all psychotic, myself included. One, we were treated like the center of the universe growing up. My younger cousin puts it perfectly. I had to be funny growing up because all everyone talked about at family gatherings was either our brother's football team or your horse shows. <laughs> growing up, conversations with these women centered on horses and showing, and that's all anyone ever talked about. Whether it be because they cared and were interested or just being polite, it didn't matter. No one asked me about a boyfriend or breakup in high school, but that event I competed in where I was, where I went training level for the first time was the talk of Easter, my junior year in high school. Oh, wow, you jumped how high? What was your time show jumping cross country? Your mom showed me the video. You guys looked great. It was also the only thing my mom and I talked about growing up. Our lives became centered around first my hobby and then my sport. During meal plans, my riding was the center of the conversation. Looking back, I do feel bad for my brothers because his football games and golf tournaments were not discussed and dissected nearly as much as a simple riding lesson. The moral here, the equestrian women grow up thinking the world revolved around her and her horse, and it doesn't. The money our parents spent on our passion is insane. Oh my God. The average cost of raising a child in today's economy is this much money, not including inflation. My first reaction at that is to laugh. I hit that figure by the time I was in middle school and didn't even own a horse yet. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, okay, let's, let's summarize. Always the center of attention. S parents spent a lot of money. A question woman probably grew up with daddy's credit card memorized so she could order the whole Dover catalog as a child. We were expected to act more mature than we actually were from a younger age. In this hobby, you are often around lots of children unless you ride at a, you are often not around a lot of children unless you ride at a kid-centered barn. Most likely you are riding with mid-aged rich white women with huge alimony paychecks. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> From a young age, I talked to adults better than my peers. I considered the older women my friends and listened to their salacious dating stories from the ripe old age of 12. I also saw those women drinking wine on the barn patio more than occasionally and grew up hearing drunken rants about men. She, the equestrian wo woman you are crazy enough to date, probably thinks drinking box white wine every night is normal and not a sign for help. Say what you will, we can hold our own when it comes to throwing a few back. We were raised on him. The responsibility that comes with taking care of a 1,500 pound animal creates a lot of pressure. Did I cool him down properly? He was in eating when I left. I hope he's not sick. Do you think he's off on his left hind? These fragile animals that we are allowed to ride tend to consume our thoughts. Did my horse get turned out? Uh, am I asking for that lead or leech or whatever? Are my elbows flopping? Whatever. Growing up, about 80% of my thoughts were about my horse, not my boyfriend. Poor boyfriend. <laughs> I didn't even realize or really care that my ex-boyfriend was cheating on me with a friend. <laughs> I was more worried about my horse show upcoming clinic lessons. So when he broke up with me, I was at first surprised, then extremely nonchalant about the whole thing. Truthfully, I cared more about my horse than him. Damn. Well, you know, the horse has a pretty big schlong too. So 
I guess that helps. But <laughs> this is very enlightening, by the way. The typical equestrian girl, she's completely oblivious to the most normal things, but if her horse doesn't need his hay, it will give her a panic attack. If she falls off, you'll hear about nothing else. She's not the bravest person in her own mind. Yes, my horse was spooky and I could have been thrown and trampled. She will expect sympathy from a situation you can't even comprehend how dangerous it was in her mind. We trust no one, literally no one at all times. This is an interesting one. Why? Even with all the adults around, I had some great barn friends growing up. That being said, we were also each other's rival. Hey, it's the same. I knew people who are professional ice skaters, and they basically were each other's rivals. In fact, if you were a family and you ice skated together, you and your family would not be close anymore. So, yeah, this makes sense because you're competing against the same thing. So it's highly backstabbing and all that. Okay, so let's summarize. Center of the universe, a lot of money spent hanging out with very quote-unquote mature but really just older people with a lot of life experience doing the wrong thing and then taking care of a lot of this animal that's very fragile not in the real world not living in the real world and then not trusting anyone because of the competitive spirit so very interesting that's our first by a girl an equestrian horse girl don't know if this is actually what she looks like and this is on post-grad problems Next up, Girls Who Love Horses Are Inherently Crazy by Catalina Koch. This sounds like a, a girl too. So this is by Total Frat Move, which is a bro-ish, probably you could say conservative site. Anyways, I have ridden a horse maybe twice in my life. I was a kid both times in the summer camp that I got shipped off to for a few days. Each August thought it would be a good and fun activity for kids to learn the basics of horseback riding. They strapped a saddle on their smallest and tamest mare, led it around the barn a few times, and maybe let the kid trot around for a lap or two on their own. The horse looked bored out of its mind, and for a moment, I felt empathy for the poor creature having to accommodate hordes of squirming children, pretending to be real-life cowboys for all of two minutes. Searching to share a common bond between man and beast, I gazed up into the dumpy, <laughs> the dumpy horse's face as I waited my turn, trying to convey a sense of solidarity. What I received into return was nothing but a cold, hateful stare, devoid of compassion and anything that could be called common ground. Lifeless eyes stared into my soul. Its long face gave a snort as it swayed from side to side. Damn, this, this person's not a fan of horses. So the other girl rode a lot of horses, loves horses. This person does not like horses. This terrified me. Now forced to mount a creature that I had absolutely no desire to be on whatsoever and whom I was convinced wanted me dead. I clenched onto the reins and gritted my teeth as this beast trot. I said, bitch, this beast trotted circles around the barn. So they stayed. I absolutely do not trust any horse and have legitimate fears about looking one in the eye. You know, I have the same fear, but I, I fear looking pigs in the eyes because pigs are the most smart animal, and instead of treating them like dogs, we eat them. So I can't look a pig in the eye. Every time I look a pig in the eye, I just know it's a smart thinking animal. Pigs are smarter than cats, and in its mind, it's like, you're treating me like food, but I'm smart. Recognize me, and I just can't look a pig in the eye. Anyways. Many girls, however, do not share my fear. Quite the opposite, actually. It seems that there are basically three types of girls when it comes to horses. The majority of girls like horses. Maybe few have ridden a few, but it's not really a conversation with them. These girls are normal. The next group of girls actually take an active interest in horses. Maybe their family owns a few, they enjoy the occasional ride, or they've even dabbled in some competitions or shows. These girls approach it as a hobby or interest, and while they can be a little intense at times, they basically stay on the sane side of the continuum. And finally, there are girls who really, really love horses, like a lot. Like a lot. For these girls, horses are a way of life. They frequently wear their riding boots to class, get teary-eyed talking about the stables, and almost universally possess a weird talent for drawing their favorite horses on huge sheets of charcoal paper. Three-fourths of their Instagram are horse headshots with captions like, Riding is life. Thunder is the sound of hoofbeats in heaven. These girls are unequivocally crazy. <laughs> At first, you only see the benefits. Sure, you can sense the instability lurking in her eyes as she regales you with tales from the stable, but you shrug it off. The riding puns, 
practically right themselves and pretty soon she's playing a cowgirl to your meat stead she's a freak in the sack with thighs clenching around you like a vice and for a moment everything seems good she's even down for some beep stuff why did i censor that out i don't know she's down for some butt stuff <laughs> because when you're that equestrian obsessed it's practically a given after your midnight rodeo, you send her out to pasture and on her way, fully expecting to never see her again. Damn, she's describing a horse girl like a horse. This is um, this could offend some people. It's very um, not objectifying. What's the word? It's very animalizing. Animal beast. What's the opposite? So anthropomorphizing is when you give human characteristics to non-humans. What's the what's the um? Metamorphizing, I think is the right word. I don't know. Whatever. But see her again, you will, because this girl will follow you. Talking about the incredible connection you shared, suddenly the situation isn't so cool. When you throw up a picture of you and your sister, you'll get a text asking, who is the skank? <laughs> she thinks the girl in the news who cut off her man's junk for cheating was totally justified, and her laugh will drive you to madness. I've heard tales of equine obsessed girls having only anal sex exclusively because they thought it meant they were still a virgin. Fingers have been slipped into butts. Riding crops have been brought out onto the unwilling. Serious stuff, you guys. Something happens when a girl spends too much time in the saddle. Suddenly, every connection is special. Every contact full of meaning. She believes every bond is so great as to be unconscious, unconscionable to break... At some point, she will have equated you and her horse in the same vein. And that is not a passion you want to be in. While it may bring out the butt stuff, the benefits aren't worth the hassle. Sure, you like pulling her hair up until she, up until she set fire to your crotch. <laughs> and just her pelvis can strangle a yak. For those of you who don't know, a yak is this Himalayan type of huge kind of... Not a horse relative, more like an ox or buffalo relative. But at what cost? It's best to walk away while you still can. I don't have a great explanation for why this is the case, but I can assure you that this relationship is real and it's scary. And by all means, God help you if you find a girl into unicorns. <laughs> because, what about ponies? She didn't talk about girls into ponies. Anyways, because you won't make it out alive. Just keep in mind my simple rule. While it may seem like fun to strap on a saddle and take one for a ride yourself, one look in the eyes will tell you all you need to know. That shit crazy! <laughs> wow, this is, this is pretty funny. Interesting. So where's the previous article? Talked about sort of the spoiled nature of girls slash the out-of-touchness. This one's more animalistic. Like, she'll treat you like her horse in a way. Very interesting. So it's two different views, two different reasons. And then, so this is, I don't, tr I guess this is the generic screenshot you get when you, if, unless you upload a profile picture. So this guy wrote, Delta Good Hands wrote, girls who like and own horses are just crazy cat ladies who happen to have money. Okay. Let's look at another comment. I don't know what Sweet Briar is. If you guys know, please let me know. In no way am I bragging or proud of it, but I've dabbled in the rodeo girls, and this is 100% true. <laughs> rad Pitt, like Brad Pitt, but Rad Pitt. They've always gotten what they wanted. When she told Santa I want a pony for Christmas, she actually got one probably before she was eight, five, I mean five. She had a sweet 16 at 13, first G class at 15, bot mitzvah. Yeah, so what this guy's saying is exactly what this lady was saying on post-grad problems. I, I had a date with a equestrian girl tonight. Should I be concerned? <laughs> okay, let's go to the next article. So this one I need to shrink down a little to fit the font size. So how to successfully date a crazy. So this one just assumes that she's crazy. How to successfully date a crazy horse girl in seven steps. And it's written by a girl too. Horse girls get a reputation for being crazy horse. Horse crazy, sorry. A crazy horse like the Native American leader. And I think this is why guys are a little intimidated by them when it comes to the dating scene. I'm here to give you a little information if you are crushing on a horsey girl. On a horsey girl. 
It always sounds like Jersey Girl and a Horsey Girl. Just so you know what you're getting into. So let's get into it. We're not crazy about horses all the time. Notice you said all the time. First things first. First things first. I'm a realist. You need to know that what you're getting yourself. We're passionate about what we do. Please don't think we do this just because we love horses. So they, okay, they're passionate. Try to sound interested in what we do. We'd love to tell you about our sport. Yeah, for hours. We are individuals who believe in commitment to your horses, right? Um, we commit a lot to our sport. So you will not have to worry about us not being committed. Wait, 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 that doesn't make sense. That goes against what this said, what the post-grad said, because what the post-grad problem said is that they're so committed to their sports that you're an afterthought, so that's not true. You'll have to understand that we might be gone at the barn for hours. Yep, we don't like to waste your time. Well, of course, you got a horse to sit on. You got clitoral stimulation that way. We will tell you cool facts about history in relation to our sports. <laughs> that's true. Did you know Persians were the first to wear high heels? Yeah, that's true. Do, you, do we don't like lavish, expensive gifts? Yeah, just take them out horse riding, I guess. Oh, this one was this one was lame. All right, this is an archive post. You won't, oh, this is Reddit. People who have dated crazy horse girls, sorority girls, etc. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this bigger. <laughs> valley girls. So we have to. This one is a little open ended because it's horse girls, sorority girls, and valley girls. So let's, we have to find horses. So let's do our control F. Let's find horses. So I've dated two horse girls, never again. Now I'm all for supporting my significant other's interest and in trying to be involved, but I'm not gonna spend any time driving back and forth from the barn with your sweaty horse stench imbued shit covered riding booted ass. <laughs> Fuck all that, I know. I don't wanna feed that goddamn thing a carrot. <laughs> so, Another another person replied, fuck horses, dude. I went to my ex's barn a few times. The people there were pretty nice and funny and all that, but she'd take me to the stables to meet the horses. And those things would try to bite me and lick me and do whatever weird shit horses like to do to people. <laughs> okay. This guy's talking about horse girls. I dated one uh, who once said, my mother, my father, shit, anyone would be better to lose than my precious gator, her horse's name. I also noticed something about horse girls. They all seem to be short or shorter um, with really long hair, no significant chest. I also noticed a lack of home cleaning. <laughs> oh, wow, interesting. All right. Um, my best friend is a horse girl. She went through her phone in a bucket of water to see if it floats. Was genuinely surprised when it didn't. Baffled that it just won't work anymore. That fits into the out of touch with reality type of. Oh, horse girl. Someone doesn't understand what a horse girl is. Really interesting. All right. Okay. It looks like the font got messed up again. So let's do this. My horse girl ex would sometimes get so angry. She would black out uncontrollably flail her arms and leg for a minute. Then fall unconscious. Other times she'd recognize how crazy she was. Which just sent her into a weird breakdown. Where she'd wail about how she'd forever be alone and whatnot. Borderline someone wrote. Okay, let's keep looking. Horse girls, horse. Oh, yeah, just use her. Just use this. We'll keep searching until we find horse. Why didn't I do this earlier? After a third date, I started to understand why she was a horse girl. I hear somewhere that horses are the most codependent animals. All she talked about was marriage. Oh, that makes sense. What is a horse girl? Oh, some people still don't know what a horse girl is. I guess they're not American. Um. Okay, that's all. So that's pretty interesting. We had a lot of codependence, another word we learned. So horses are not just fragile or st and stinky. They're codependent, too. All right. So where did the idea of girls who like horses are crazy? This one's asking about the origin. It's from the out of the loop. Write it. I grew up in the Midwest in a sort of country area. I can give some examples from personal experiences. Oh, this is going to be good. Look at that. It's got 2,375 upvotes. Every girl that made sure you know she had a horse, sorry, every girl that, yeah, yeah, would also wear cowboy boots to school, multiple photos of their horses in their locker, and would only be able to relate to other girls with horses because that's all they were capable of talking about. They were typical crafting to fine arts, but every single one I knew exclusively doodled horses in class. So this is very similar to the first article we read on the post-grad problems. It's kind of explaining that type of girl. Just that's their hobby. That's their passion. Kind of like PUAs, for example. All they can talk about is PUA. 
Um, so, grow up in central New Jersey. They have folders, binders, stickers, backpacks. I said they literally cry when you make fun of horses. They have names picked out for all horses they'll have. Okay. Uh, they quickly point the fact that the state of the animal, New Jersey, is the horse because the U.S. Olympic equestrian team headquarters is in New Jersey. Oh, so New Jersey actually has a role in the United States. Very interesting. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, uh, come on, come on. They're very expensive animals to keep. And lessons and equipment are very pricey, but it is doable for middle class family. Location will change to somewhat. In rural areas, it's actually pretty affordable and it's cheap and resources are easily available. Obviously, in some areas, it becomes less and less feasible for a middle class family. Um, uh, so interesting. This guy's talking about how horse girls don't have to be rich per se. Uh oh. Now it's getting. Now the conversation's getting. I need to. Yeah, horses cost money. Very large part of owner's life. I don't think we're learning anything new. Oh my god. Horse girl at my school carrying the ashes of a, her dead horse around in a locket. And how they spilled everywhere all the time. And she had to keep replacing it. But the placenta went horse. Whoa. Wow. Okay. They had to smell absolutely awful. I don't know. I ever knew anyone who didn't know the basics riding. Having a horse in your own wasn't really ubiquitous. But I, had, I never knew anyone like you described. Never. Oh, I want to go to Texas now. It seems like Texas is the only place with conservative girls who are not nuts. Um, also, for the dating one of these girls for a long time, everything revolved around her horses. So this, again, proves the, um, the, the post-grad problems article. Her parents are gushing about how well she has a lot of parent attention. Okay, so I think we kind of get it now. But let's see if we can find any more interesting things. Uh, oh, there you are. I like this one. So let's, let's go here. Horses are crazy. You have to be at least a little crazy to own one, pay for one, work around one, care for one, ride one, etc. Thousand pound unpredictable animals with the brains of toddlers. Hell, even dealing with the people that enjoy horses is crazy. Everyone cares for them differently and... All other opinions are wrong. Everyone's own horse is the best horse, number one. Blue ribbon, whole world. Lots of people that own horses do it the fancy way, which doesn't help the stereotype anyways. So this person's own two horses, been around horses. Damn, extra crazy. <laughs> wow. I had a few classes as a kid. I basically instructed just kick the horse's ribs harder and harder to get it to listen. Haven't gotten much older, I now feel extremely guilty, and I'm glad I brushed it out afterwards. I deserve to get nipped. It's fairly hard for a child to kick a horse hard enough to hurt it. Okay, so this person's defending this person, interesting. Speaking as a crazy horse girl, oh, this is gonna be good. The spoiled rich girl is only half of it. The other half is it takes a certain type of personality. Okay, so this is this is talking about the personality aspect, maybe the animalistic or the codependent part. There's two variances, delusional, her horse is her best friend, she's convinced will never hurt her. It understands her soul, liable to become vegan at some point. Because she can't bear to think about poor animals suffering, um, blah, 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 controlling. Horses are a thousand pounds of potential daily animal. Make it, making it do what you want is an incredibly satisfying challenge. Knowing that it could kill you is part of the thrill. Much more likely to always be buying, selling horses, and chasing the next challenge. Perfectionists tend to be mercenary, competitive, and aggressive. Me, if I'm honest. Interesting. So that's a very good psychology. Very self-reflection. Very cool. Now this girl is super into horse. She owns horses. She has horses. Theme ever drives. Blah, blah. They're not mentally insane or anything. It's just they either aren't into horses or they're completely obsessed with the horses. There's no middle ground, and they are incapable of. Good example is Tinder. If you browse Tinder, at least in my area, there's so many girls that just can't help but have their horses in every single photo. Wow, I haven't seen any of that, but maybe we should do an exploration on Tinder. I think it's good enough. Let's go to the final article. Uh, horse girls. This is from Ask Men. It's a different sub. So you get more males sharing their minds. So this got to be good. So let's do this. I knew a horse girl in college about a week after the earthquake tsunami in Japan that took Fukushima. We were in class talking about places to donate money or food. She pipes up and asks about where to donate to help the animals, which is great and all. Then she clarified she was looking for someone to donate that wouldn't spend that money on people, just animals. She heard so much about certain how certain funds she didn't specify would reroute the money to help people instead of animals 
or had joint funds for people and animals that held both. She wasn't interested in that apparently. Horses and animals are higher priority than really anything else. She was also majoring in equine studies as a custom major and the daughter of someone on the board of directors for the school. Red flags are everywhere with that one. Did you smash the... <laughs> oh, so let's see what this guy said. No, I've had my share of crazy and even that was too blatant. I bet she rode well. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, let's keep going. Um, blah, do, 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 do. Ouch, no bueno. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go to something funny. Horse girls looking for pointers to hide are crazy. Okay, this one, this thread might be good. So let's... Yesterday, I mentioned something about lobsters. They're really cool creatures, and everyone said I was worse than a horse girl. I am now lobster girl. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that is really funny. Um, come on. This one's not good. Girls who have horses have zero time for much life outside of taking care of horses. Okay, so this is basically covered by the post, um, whatever it's called, post-graduation problems or whatever, post-grad problem. I dated a horse girl. I could tell you about her specifically. She came from money but didn't really have any herself. There's the fact that she didn't have a steady job while we dated. She portrayed herself as socialite, but in reality, she didn't have an apartment and slept on her friend's couch. I didn't learn that until after we broke up and her friend told me. So how did you not know? As in, <laughs> you went to her place and she borrowed her friend's room for you guys to bang? Is that what happened? Interesting. They grew up with daddy paying for everything. They only want a man who has enough money to keep paying her stuff. And brother, horses are expensive. Yep. All right. Country girls with horses are great, but city girls with horses tend to be pretentious. I'm generalizing, of course. Country girls with horses can be obsessed with living in the country or getting a horse when you move to the city. Oh, interesting. Wow. Horse riding guy myself, so I give insight. As mentioned, yes, daddy's money, red flag, smell is a big one. Um, crazy is another factor if you're aware of hot, crazy skill. <laughs> you understand this one? Horsey people are crazy. That's a fact. What sane person would get on a ton of animal that could easily kill you? Biggest one, however, is time. Horse riding is a female-dominated sport. Very rare that I ride with another guy. And horse girls don't really put yourself in situations where you are around guys. And as well as that being a detriment to the dating scene, it does cause an echo chamber for what expectations of men should be. Oh, this is interesting. It fits with the be-in-their-own-world type of thing that the post-grad problems article is saying. But then it's like, you're not just tying the other article. You're not just putting yourself with girls. You're putting yourself with a lot of older, rich white women who are living off alimony or whatever. So another link with time is that the horse comes first, of course. Don't forget about property. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I think we're done, man. I think what we will say here is horse girls, just be careful. Be careful, guys. Be careful. Them thighs. Horseback riding can induce confidence in a person. Unfortunately, many horse people have overdosed on confidence, but still, them thighs. In my opinion, it's more a joke. Okay, I'm done, guys. I think we, we did a very good literature exploration. We looked at Reddit. We looked at Total Frat Move. We looked at post-grad problems or whatever that that site's called. So I find it funny because I know in other cultures, potentially, Riding a horse might be considered more high class or something like that. But somehow it came to America and then we just did a 30 minute video exploring how you could probably make some assumptions about women who ride horses. So, wild horses could drink me away. I just had to do that. I just had to do that before we ended the video. This The only reason I made a conclusion was so I could just sing that song. It's a great song. But anyways, getting back on point. At my old job, there was this girl who every picture that she put up was like a horse. Like all her profile pictures were a horse. And <laughs> inevitably, if you're an American, you're going to just call her horse girl. Because you probably don't know her Chinese name, right? It's like, it's... 
It's hard to say a Chinese name if you don't speak Chinese. So people would call her horse girl. I would just laugh every time I heard horse girl because I didn't know if all of them were calling her horse girl just because, oh, she's a horse girl. Or they were calling her horse girl because they were putting all these other associations onto her. I think most of the people who called her horse girl probably were aware of the associations. For, for those of you watching who worked with me before and didn't understand why I was so adamant about telling this girl, I told the girl, look, you gotta stop putting horses on your freaking company profile because people are gonna make assumptions about you, especially if they're American. So people like got cringed out that I told her and I sent her a lot of these links that we were reviewing. So for those of you who didn't understand why I told her, I hope this clarifies it to you because if you're someone who's trying to tell people what to do, which she was one of those, you can't be a horse girl. You literally can't. You know, you can't be in a leadership position and have people think you're a fucking horse girl. That's all it is. It's something I've wanted to talk about for a while because <laughs> we had a horse girl at her company. <laughs> Where does a horse go if he gets sick? To the hospital. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> now, the thing about the term horse, so for those of you who study language, who study psychology, I'm going to get really deep into this, by the way. There's certain words that are more guttural. Think the name Paul or horse. Horse gets pronounced very back of the throat. And <laughs> there's something about words that get pronounced from the back of the throat that for some reason don't elicit the best emotions in people. So if you want to make a good impression, first impression, you want a name like Jerry or a name like Wendy. You know, because these words come from the front of the throat, not the throat, front of the mouth. Whereas words like horse or Paul or Saul come from the back of the mouth, aka the throat. And apparently, they're less likely to generate positive first impressions. Of course, first impressions are not auditory, right? Most first impressions are a combination of situational plus body language, plus a little bit of auditory and then a little bit of the actual context of what the person's saying and doing. What was I getting at? Oh yeah. So part of the reason why the word horse girl is funny is because horse comes from the back of the throat. It's a guttural thing. And then girl, girl is a pretty guttural. Although girl, girl, like like if the valley girl said girl, no, it's 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 middle. It's middle of the mouth. One of the reasons why horse girl had the had that kind of negative perception is just because the word horse, the way Americans pronounce horse, like if you compare horse to, how would a British person pronounce horse? Like horse, like horse, my horsey, horse. I guess it's it's a different part. It's it's upper, it's up, it's throat, but it's upper palate, like horse, right? Versus horse. You see, it's it's a different part of the mouth. Horse, my horse. I want to go ride a horse. I know Australians say horse. My horse. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, the word horse comes from the back of the mouth, aka the throat, and there's something about that type of guttural thing that doesn't automatically elicit a good impression. That's why, for example, when German people or any country that's very guttural, when you hear them speaking, it sounds like it's... <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying now. Honestly, I just wanted to sing Wild Horses. That's why I ranted this long. So, Wild Horses couldn't drag me away. Oh, wild, Wild Horses couldn't drag me away. Whatever. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If any of you horse girls get offended, I don't give a fuck. But honestly, you shouldn't care what I think because I'm probably not going to be really associating with you anyway. So, like, pick your battles, man. Don't get triggered by this. I'm just a funny guy. I hope if you guys don't find me funny, whatever, maybe this channel's not for you. But I'm just a funny guy and life is funny. Most of the situations in life are pretty funny, including horse girls. So, nee!